Okay, come on in, have a seat. Everyone have a seat. Thank you, thank you. Please, the do now is um, on your desk. I would like you to start the do now. We're gonna spend a quiet five minutes. Please, if you could, thank you. Okay, now that you're finished with the do now, um, I wanna talk about the title of our lesson today. The title of our lesson is called The Central Dogma, Protein Synthesis. Um, and what is the pro Central Dogma, Protein Synthesis, you might ask? Um, the name is titled to explain the flow of genetic information from RNA to, D to, to from DNA to RNA to protein. Okay, it's the flow of information from DNA to RNA to protein. And this is the overall name given of the central dogma for the process of this flow of genetic information from DNA which makes proteins. And so today I wanted to talk about um, this DNA molecule and just how awesome it is. And in your do now, you had five questions and the first question was DNA the miracle molecules responsible were which of the following? Determining a culprit in a crime, birth of a lamb, eye color, or all the above? Ah, yes, all the above. You know, DNA um, is has been such a huge molecule that has been responsible for so much of the innovations of life. Um, we now, in, in order to do a crime nowadays, you need to um, have like a, 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 a plastic suit on which keeps all of your body, uh, skin cells, sweat, everything in, intact. You, like your hair needs to be covered. Like you always are leaving a piece of yourself around which carries your DNA, which actually can identify you. Can you, and, and you know, which is, you know, how they catch so many criminals now, you know, using um, DNA studies. Okay. Uh, but can you believe that they were actually able to birth a live animal in the laboratory just using DNA? So it's amazing. DNA is responsible for your eye color, um, for your skin tone, for height, just so many things. For the ability for you to be able to roll your tongue. Okay. Not everybody has the ability to roll your tongue. Try it. Try it. Some people have the ability to roll their tongue and some people don't. That's all based on DNA and the inheritance of DNA. Um, number two, in all of your body, um, was if all your DNA in your body was unwound and linked together, can it stretch from earth to sun and back 600 times? Okay? True or false? Yes, it's true. It's true. I, I just want to talk about how expansive the DNA molecule is. The actual um, strands of DNA. Um, if you were to excise all the DNA in our body, we would be able to 600 times back and forth from the sun. An amazing, amazing length of, of, of the DNA in our body. So that brings me to what does DNA stand for? Please, someone. Yes, exactly. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid is a nucleic acid. And since we're talking about that, I uh, just want to briefly mention that there's four major important biological molecules in our body that allows us to do everything that we do, these molecules. Uh, one is a carbohydrate, which is basically sugars. Two are fats, okay? Three are proteins, okay? And four is nucleic acid, okay? And uh, the, the, the reason why, and I personally think that nucleic acid is probably the most important because nucleic acid is, a, is, 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 what, is what DNA is, okay? Ribo, deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is a nucleic acid, and um, it has as its components a phosphate and a sugar, okay, and what's called nucleotide bases. Um, and these nucleotide bases, um, which we're going to talk about soon, are the actual the coding of the, the actual 
um, aligning of the nucle uh, of the nucleotide bases um, on the DNA molecule is what is the code that goes from DNA to RNA to make protein, and that we're going to discuss later. All the genes in your body add up to what percentage of total DNA? 3%, 5%, 10%, or 25%? Oh, wow. You are, you, you know, surprisingly, okay? A gene, okay, surprisingly, it's only 3%, okay? So this here is a chromosome, and on chromosomes are little stretches of genes, okay? And I, this is a chromosome, and I unwound this chromosome, okay? There's histone. Um, uh, I, and, and this, the unwinding of this chromosome shows a double helix structure um, of DNA, and um, this double helix structure shows the actual base pairs, which only three percent of the total DNA DNA is uh, is our genes. Okay, the last one, number five, of the five billion base pairs in the human genome or in DNA, only a small percentage is what makes us unique. In other words, what makes me me, right? Which gives me my hair color, which gives me my nose, which gives me my, you know, great eyesight or lack of great eyesight, um, is, uh, so do, do we think that um, what small percentage that makes us unique, which makes me me and you you, what is that? 5% of that genome? Um, makes makes us unique. Three percent, one percent, or point one percent. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. It's point one percent. In other words, ninety nine point nine nine percent of our bodies are all the same. We all have the same stuff, and only one percent, only point one percent, actually makes us different. So that's that's truly amazing. And um, you know, I just want to talk about. Um, Protein synthesis now, we're going to talk about protein synthesis, which is the actual, the actual transfer of information from DNA to RNA, and the translation of information from DNA to protein. That's called protein synthesis. This step is the transcribing of DNA to RNA, and here we're translating uh, RNA to protein. And just want you to quickly understand that, you know, this is a, like, you know, we've learned Spanish, you've learned um, um, French in school, right? We learn these languages. Well, DNA, they have their own languages, okay? DNA communicates to, you know, through four nitrogenous bases, um, adenine, thymine, uh, cytosine, and guanine. RNA communicates through four bases as well. Um, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine, and then proteins communicate, which is, you know, a long chain of polypeptides, um, through amino acids, which is their building block, okay? So we're going to, we're going to talk about the central dogma and about this protein synthesis of transcription and translation, um, but first I want to talk about the DNA molecules some more, so we can understand the, the, the uh, understanding the molecule and the structure helps us to provide more information um, about how the process works from the transcription to the translation. So, um, what we wanted to do now was, you know, and, and I just want to tell you, this entire process is so important. And why is so important? Why are proteins so important? What's the big deal? Well, proteins, they, they work in, in um, transport, structure. They are responsible, proteins are responsible for enzymes. They make all the stuff that makes us work, okay? The, they protect the body. The making of proteins has to be one of the most important um, biological processes that occur in our bodies. So we want to make sure that we understand this protein synthesis and how it works, okay? So now we're gonna discuss um, the DNA molecule, okay? And so the DNA molecule, as I said, um, has a, um, I, I guess, uh, is, is 
starts off in, uh, as, let's say, in the chromosome. Okay, this is a chromosome. And, you know, little bands of area of the chromosome is reflected in the genes. And as you can see, if we were to unwind this chromosome, we would see a, a ladder. A ladder which is twisted, okay? Um, a ladder has two rungs, okay? One on each side. And it has steps in the middle. Well, this twisted ladder, which is called a double helix, um, and um, has four, uh, it, it, the steps on the ladder are, you know, where these bases are. <clears throat> the sides of the ladder are, um, are the, the two sides of the ladder, um, they run anti-parallel to each other, meaning um, they run from five prime to three prime, let's say on one side of the ladder, and they were from five prime to three prime on the other side of the ladder. And so, there's a double helix, and this ladder has, is, is a phospho um, ribose base, okay? Uh, it's phospho um, ribose um, ends of the ladder, okay? Phosphorus and, and, and sugar, and it's connected to a nitrogenous base. Uh, like I said, there's four bases, Adenine combines with thymine, apples in a tree, and cytosine combines with guanine, cars in the garage. That's our mnemonic. We can always remember um, uh, the pairing of the bases on a DNA molecule. So the DNA molecule uh, pairs the bases with adenine, thymine, and cytosine and guanine. Okay? And so... In order for us to, to really understand um, this structure of DNA, what we need to do is first understand um, you know, why it replicates itself, okay? So if I were to get a cut on my finger, like a paper cut, right? So I get a paper cut and, oh my gosh, my finger's cut. And, you know, I have this cut, it hurts for a number of days. And then after a few days, it's gone. What happened, okay? Well, what happened is um, cells are growing. And they're growing by dividing, okay? The division of, of, of these DNA through DNA um, replication um, is the process in which, um, right? So, so the DNA replication is the process of growing. This is the process of making new DNA um, from, um, from a single strand. So how this works, how this process works of making new DNA and your cut is being healed and, and um, you're growing and more proteins are being made is um, the, 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 during the, 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 the duplication process or replication process where DNA um, replicates itself, um, it unwinds, okay, and... The, as you can see here, there are two strands of this double-stranded molecule. There is, let's say, what's called a leading strand, okay? And the leading strand is probably five prime to three prime. And there's a lagging strand, which is three prime to five prime. Bases can only be added um, in a five prime to three prime direction. So, if we, you know, again, Proteins are so important, and we keep saying proteins are so important. There are so many proteins, which are called enzymes, which are involved in this process um, of this DNA replication. So, these proteins um, are, uh, let's say, we could call them helicase, okay? Helicase is the um, protein which splits this um, ladder, Okay, it's a protein which splits the uh, the the hydrogen bases, the the hydrogen bonds that hold these two bases together. Um, adenine and thy thymine have about three bonds, and cytosine and guanine have about two bonds, and so it's split. And um, what happens is um, base pairs are added by a molecule called DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is another protein which is responsible for 
adding a thymine to an adenine, and adding an adenine to a thymine, and adding a cytosine to a guanine, and adding the, you know, guanine to cytosine. So, so the, the RNA polymerase, uh, after, you know, this, this, uh, these, bond, these hydrogen bonds are split, adds in the leading strand a continuous basis, a, a, on a continuous um, adding of these um, nucleotide bases in complement to the leading strand. But the lagging strand can't, not so easy, okay? The lagging strand runs from 3 diamond to 5 prime. And as I said earlier, bases can only be added from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, um, what happens is um, there is a primer, an RNA primer, which comes in and actually primes a short piece of the lagging strand, okay? And uh, DNA primase comes in and hooks on to that short piece of that primer and begins to add bases, add complementary bases uh, of adenine to a thymine and, and, and guanine to a cytosine uh, continuously, but it stops after a period, after you know, sort of a, sh a sort of a short um, stint. And again, there's another piece that was added um, by our, by an RNA primer, and then again, DNA polymerase comes and adds in. Once you get these number of these little pieces in this lagging strand, you have what's called Okizaki fragment. This is what it's called. And okay, second fragments are nothing more than saying since the DNA molecule can't be continuously built um, from on the lagging strand from three prime to five prime, there is this process that occurs. Um, there's an enzyme which comes along and um, changes the RNA, you know, of, of of the primer to DNA molecules, and then seals the entire lagging strand. So. It looks just like the leading strand, and that's why we call it semi-conservative, is because we get two new strands, one old, providing as a template for the new, and in each strand, and one old and one new. Um, and that's how our skin grows, and that's how, you know, we, 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 uh, we heal and, and, and have to provide structure and protection for our bodies. So, that is... DNA replication. So I want to now. I would like to move. To, are there any questions? Are there any questions to the process of DNA replication? I know we've gone over this before. This is just a review. I now want to talk about transcription and translation. Okay. Transcription is the the copying of the message from DNA to RNA, and the translation of the message from RNA into protein. That is called translation and, you know, through protein synthesis. Okay? And so, let's first talk about transcription. So, as in DNA replication, as you know, um, this, this uh, fork, the, the, these two strands are, um, are separated through an enzyme which separates the two strands. And, again, the leading strand... Um, is added from five prime to three prime, and um, messenger RNA um, is, you know, comes in and provides complementary bases to the DNA template strand that's there. Now, I, as I said earlier, messenger RNA, which is the the actual molecule that's re responsible for the the pairing up of the DNA template. Um, messenger RNA has four bases, but it does not include thymine. There's one base, um, instead of thymine, that's called uracil. Uracil in RNA is a molecule, uh, is a nucleotide base, which, which pairs up with adenine. So, whenever you see an adenine, we're gonna put uracil in, in RNA, Whenever we see you know guanine, we put cytosine. Whenever we see um, um, uracil, we use adenine. Okay. Um, so uh, what happens in messenger RNA is that there's a complementary strand 
inside the nucleus which um, is made as a result of the base pairing. Um, this complementary strand is made from an RNA um, uh, polymerase and it makes the strand and the RNA okay uh, leaves the nucleus okay so the RNA once it is um, uh, translates its message okay so we have you know, four codons in DNA and now we have you know three of them are the same and one's different as your as your seal but that specific code is the message that is taken into the cytoplasm and once it's in the cytoplasm it hooks up with a ribosome okay so there are three types of RNA one this one here messenger RNA it's called messenger RNA because it actually carries the message in the nucleotide bases that messenger RNA hooks up to a ribosome where it, in, it, it encounters um, ribosomal RNA ribosomal RNA um, is responsible for the, um, the, 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 the bringing transfer RNA molecules from the cytoplasm with an amino acid attached to join to the messenger RNA. How is this done? Well, what you have is on um, the messenger RNA, you might have right if this is mRNA right you might have a uh, a message of let's say a thymine let's say a guanine um, and let's say a cytosine okay so this is called a codon a codon c o d o n and a codon includes three base pairs and this codon actually combines transfer RNA brings an amino acid from the cytoplasm and it joins um, with a uh, thymine um, combines with adenine okay and cytosine combines with guanine uh, uh, yes and cytosine and guanine okay and so these are the complement this is the codon this is the codon here and here is the anticodon, okay, which is on, which is attached to an amino acid. And this amino acid um, is um, this amino acid is built one by one by transfer RNAs coming in, pairing up with codons. And the codon, which we can understand from our codon chart. There's two types of codon charts that they are responsible for which amino acid is chosen. Um, the codons, okay, not the code, not the anticodon, but the codon has is a three-letter sequence, and it the first letter it's here, and then you go to the top to find the second letter, and then to the right side to find the third. And what this does is tell you which amino acids gets added as a result of our base pairing. This process is called translation. Okay? So this is a special this is like a special language of our body that they you know how it speaks to one another. You know how we learn French and Spanish, you know, we, we learn the vocabulary, then we learn to conjugate the verbs. Okay. What's happening here is that there's a language. DNA has a four-letter code language, okay? It speaks to, through that code, RNA, through their four-letter code, okay? And RNA, in turn, speaks to um, the, the transfer RNA, um, which, is, you know, which, brings, which, which, which brings the anticodon and the, um, and the amino acids, and... Um, that there are 20 amino acids which can be chosen. So we're talking from four letter code language to 20 letter codes. That is the central dogma. That is what is responsible for the actual, the code, the actual four letters of DNA and the position of those four letters 
the position is what colors for eye color, what colors for height, um, what colors whether you can roll your tongue or not. The position of those nucleotides communicates with RNA and the position of those complementary bases in RNA um, is what gives rise to protein. And protein is a polypeptide chain with, um, uh, with, with amino acids and once the protein is made, it folds and it does you know, numerous very, very important jobs. So, um, in closing, I would really want to talk about um, just how awesome this process is. You know, of all the DNA in our body, mistakes are rarely made. So it's crucially and so exciting and amazing to understand that, you know, rarely, rarely are mistakes made in this process, and this process is happening all the time. Like, we've been making base pairs the whole time we've been talking. We've been, you know, synthesizing DNA into protein. And um, um, we have some exercises to go over so we can make sure we, you know, get to know this information more, work with it, you know, play games with it and have fun. We're going to get into groups. Okay, we have some homework here. And this homework, um, what we're doing is I have um, some base pairing worksheets here where we're going to you're going to look at DNA base pairs and we're going to have the complement, I want you to provide the complementary strand. We have RNA um, in which we're going to um, provide the RNA complementary strand to the DNA. And then we have um, a codon chart here and we're going to um, provide the actual um, amino acid that gets built into the polypeptide chain as a result of the messenger RNA and transfer RNA, which brings the, the actual amino acids. So we're going to be doing this um, assignment in pairs, and then at the end, we're going to do a Kahoot on protein synthesis so we can make sure we, you know, um, supplement our learning. Um, are there any questions to this process of the central dogma? Um, any of this um, five, you know, the five prime adding... I know I went over it pretty quickly. We're going to go over it in more detail. I just want to make sure that we have an overview of the central dogma protein synthesis uh, of the original code of DNA being transferred, um, being transcribed into RNA and translated into proteins. As I said, proteins are the most important. They're so important. It's like who came first, the DNA? Uh, which which was made by protein with all those enzymes or proteins or or the protein the DNA come first or the protein came first they're both very very important macromolecules in our body and so that's why this lesson and understanding about the central dogma and protein synthesis is so important so you know I'll be walking around into the groups um, would like to come on separate now if there's any more questions please um, let me know and I will be coming around and, 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 and you know, I can answer those questions at this time. Thank you so much.